I've been in search to find the perfect productivity system that suits both my personal and professional life. I'm pleased to announce that after jumping all over the place, it is now at its highest maturity level. I broke down this system into three sections, which helps me explain it and make the connection. Each different section consists of multiple apps, which might require some setups, and I will place the relevant link on the video. I hope you find nothing complicated in this video, and if there is, please leave a comment. I usually answer all my comments. Hi, if you're new here, I am Ben, an experienced software engineer. My whole life, including personal and work, involves creating and using software. And in this channel, I'll go a little bit deeper than basics, and I'll explain things that might help you tackle problems in your life using the best possible tools. Let's start with note-taking. As for the note-taking, I use Obsidian. I tend not to complicate this app and I use it purely as a knowledge base, although it has potential to be highly complex. Obsidian gives you a way to customize the UI and add features limitlessly, thanks to open design and third-party plugin features. This can be ally or enemy of your productivity. If you overcomplicate it for yourself, my advice to you be careful not to create a Swiss army knife out of it. Obsidian is a cross-platform app, so that solves the accessibility of it across all my devices. I love it for the reason that I can use Markdown and Wikilinks to create link across all my notes. I can organize my notes uh, in folders and subfolders and access them via quick search or tags when needed. Obsidian is great for learning and note-taking and I am using it heavily on my Windows machine and mostly for my work and technical notes. I do store a lot of codes and snippets and using a third-party plugin, I can highlight the codes in a color-coded manner just like IDEs. All said, when it comes to mobile access, it boggles me a bit. The mobile app experience is not as great out of the box, especially if you're a person who is using a mobile device to quickly capture notes, images, or other forms of information. And this is when Bear comes to play. Bear has a robust UI, quick search, and quick capture ability, which solves the mobile problem for me. Unfortunately, it is only available for Apple ecosystem. So if you are an Android user, I suggest you to use Google Keep to tackle the quick capture. Both Bear and Google Keep have great share options to transfer your notes to Obsidian later. I created a thorough video explaining why I have chosen Bear over many other big players. And I'll place a link up here so you can access it later. And I place the same link on the description so you can watch it at your ease. What do I do with my journals? I keep a record of my daily and personal journals in day one. Day one has a great user experience and organization method. A journal is usually tied to date and location, and day one is designed to tackle this by entangling your notes to date, time, and location using auto capture mechanism. The calendar and map views in day one shows you when and where you took your journals. I love the fact that I can add photos, videos, and voice notes to each record as well as creating individual journals for different categories. You might be able to tackle journaling in either Obsidian and Bear app too. In Obsidian, you can use calendar plugin. This plugin facilitates a daily note by clicking on each day, and also it marks the days you took journal or missed it. My time management package consists of three applications, Google Calendar, Todoist, and fantastical. Google Calendar is a no-brainer for scheduling your time, meetings, and an overview of the days ahead. With its integration and shareability, Gcall has easily become the main stream calendar for the majority, and I can't personally fault it. But I gained the maximum power out of it by integrating it to my Todoist. Todoist provides a seamless integration with Google Calendar and makes it even more powerful with natural language processing. I created a video on how to integrate Todoist with Google Calendar and benefit from natural language processing for your task and event managements. Uh, I'll place a link up here if you wish to see that video and also the same link in the description for you to watch later. Next for me is Todoist. Let me say this beforehand that I've tried many different to-do and task manager applications and I landed on Todoist. For the reason it's being cross-platform, it has exceptional natural language processing 
It can integrate very well with the other application that I need. Uh, the tasks can be location-based and they can take attachments. But the killer features for me are integrations and natural language processing. This brings me to the next application, which is Fantastical. I integrated my Google Calendar and Todoist to my Fantastical. This provides me a way to see the full schedule consists of tasks and events in one place for the upcoming days. Fantastical on its own has a great natural language processing for quick entries as well. The user interface is robust and very unique. And somehow I heard from the loyal users that it makes you spoiled and I totally get what they mean. The beautiful widgets on Fantastical are also a mean to get a glance of what's coming without opening the app. Whether you are a disciplined person or not, it is important to track what you're doing. Observe yourself, build good habits and quit bad ones. A habit tracker for me is me observing myself each day for free and making sure I did what I was planning to do without being too judgmental. For example, we all tend to get drowned in social media sometimes and suddenly a few days later we realize we are doing too much of it. This is where I set a limit to observe myself for it. I use an app called Habit Tracker, which has the functionality I just told you. You can track what you want and quantify it in a way you want, for example, being X times a day or certain at duration. It has enough flexibility to cover all the scenarios I thought of. I am sure you can find plenty of alternatives and similar apps for Android. This is something I usually track only on my mobile. Although Habit Tracker has a timer functionality, I still prefer to use this manual hourglass. This is a 30 minute hourglass which helps me focus and doze off from the distraction in the environment and focus completely on the task and get it done. On each flip, the world around me goes silent and I work until it finishes. Then I take a quick rest for five minutes until the next flip. I used to track individual projects using an application called Togo, which is also free for what most of the people need. But I didn't need a fancy reporting. The satisfaction of focused work was enough for me, and this hourglass does it. This now concludes this video, and I really hope it helped you mature up your productivity system. If you paid attention, a lot of the apps that I introduced can be combined together to serve multi-purpose. Do it if that suits you, because at the end of the day, there is no right or wrong, best or worst. It's what works for you. I love to hear your thoughts. If you wish further explanation, let me know. I would still love your feedback if anything I do in my productivity system could help and improve yours. I wish you productive times and I will see you in the next one.